We spent the last two lectures talking about how to use and interpret binary phase diagrams. You know, unfortunately, not everything can be boiled down to a binary or a pseudo-binary phase diagram. Sometimes we have to go to a three-component ternary phase diagram. The concepts of a ternary phase diagram are more or less just the same as they are for a binary phase diagram. However, representation starts to get more complicated. So if we wanted a complete ternary phase diagram, we'd have to have three axes for the composition, one axis for the temperature, and one axis for the pressure. Okay, and so plotting things in five dimensions is not easy. Now, if we were to simplify it a little bit and say, let's hold it at a constant pressure, we could capture a ternary phase diagram in a three-dimensional plot as shown here. So we would need, once again, three axes for the variation in composition, and that would form an equilateral triangular base of this phase diagram. And then we have temperature as the vertical axis. If you looked at this phase diagram for a minute, if we look at any face, let's look at, for example, this uh, front right face. Well, what we see on that face is just, in this case, a eutactic binary phase diagram. If we look at the face on the left-hand side here, we also see another binary eutactic phase diagram. And then the back face, which we can't see, is, is once again the same. Okay, so we can represent phase diagrams in this way, but oftentimes there might be intermediate phases forming, and you can imagine these get very complicated. So most of the time what we deal with, and in this class what we're going to deal exclusively with, would be an isothermal cut from this phase diagram. So we are going to take a constant temperature, which will give us a 2D slice out of this phase diagram. We're also here going to limit our discussion to isothermal cuts that are below the solidus. So we don't have liquid phases present. If we were to take such an isothermal cut, we might get a ternary phase diagram that would look something like this. This is the phase diagram between titanium dioxide, calcium oxide, and copper II oxide. We have now an equilateral triangle. And the goal of today's lecture is to understand how to read and navigate such a phase diagram. For starters, we have to understand when we are given a certain composition, a certain mixture of A, B, and C, how to find that point on the phase diagram. In a binary phase diagram, that's easy. We would just draw a vertical line down from our point until we reach the x-axis, and that would tell us the ratio of A to B. Here, we have a triangle, so we have to go about it in a little bit different way. There are a few different ways you can do this, and those are described in the book. I'm just going to describe one of those, which I think is the simplest way. So let's start at the upper vertex, the upper corner of this phase diagram where we have only A present. Right? At that point, the sample would be 100% A and no B or C. Let's look at the edge opposite that vertex, which is down here at the bottom, and let's draw a series of horizontal lines parallel to the opposite edge. Okay, each of these dashed red lines represents a place where the content of A is constant. So at the very bottom here, on the line from C to B, that's just the binary phase diagram between C and B, and there's no A present. Then at the dashed line right above it, at any point on this line, the sample is going to be 20% A. The line above represents the collection of points where the A component is 40% of the sample, and then 60%, and finally 80%. We can see the scale over here on the right. That shows how much A is present. And you can see that the dashed lines go through 0.6 for 60%, 0 0.8 for 80%. Now, if you were to look at the scale on the left, 
you might say, well, what is, that doesn't match. And that's because the scale on the left is the amount of C in a binary mixture of A and C. So 20% C is the same thing as 80% A. Now, we could do the same thing for the other two components. If we were to look at the amount of B, we want to draw lines that are parallel to the AC side of the triangle. And here you can see the lines of constant B. It's analogous for C. In that case, the lines of constant C are parallel to the side of the triangle that represents the mixture of A and B, right? Let's uh, put this into practice. Here is a slightly more complicated phase diagram. We now have one uh, binary phase on the phase diagram, AC2. We're going to spend just a couple slides to think about this phase diagram. And what I would like you to do to begin with is to tell me what is the composition of point D. Let's pause the video right now. We've got some dashed lines on the graph that already kind of point the way to what we need to do. If we wanted to determine the amount of component A, we need to draw a line that's parallel to the BC edge. And you can see that line right here, the dashed red line. And so the question is, how much A does that represent? Well, it's pretty close to the top here. And we can see if we look on this axis that that line represents 60% A. OK. If we wanted to look at the amount of B, we need to draw a line parallel to the AC face of the triangle. And you can see that that cuts through this axis right here at point 3, right? That's 30% B. And the last line, which we draw parallel to the AB side of the triangle, tells us the amount of C. And you can see here that cuts through this axis right here at 10%. So it's 10% C. And when we add those together, we come up with 100%. So this sample is 60% A, 30% B, 10% C. So the next question is, all right, once we find the place on the phase diagram where our composition is located, what more can we say about it? And the point of a phase diagram is to say what phases happen to be in equilibrium at that given point. On a ternary phase diagram, there are three possibilities. We could be at a specific point. So here, in addition to the vertices, right, A, B, and C, we have one special point. And that's right here, the binary compound AC2. So if we happen to be right on this point, the only phase present is AC2. Well, we could also be on a line. right? So I've drawn a red line here that exists in our phase diagram between AC2 and B. So if our point falls on that line, then we have a two-phase mixture of AC2 and B. Now, the other lines in this phase diagram are all on the edges, right? So on this bottom edge, we would have a mixture of B and C. On this right-hand edge, we would have a mixture of A and B. And on the left-hand edge, it depends on where we're at. If we're anywhere in this upper part, we're going to have a mixture of A and AC2. And if we're down here below it, we're going to have a mixture of AC2 and C. The entire rest of the phase diagram is just made up of areas. So every ternary phase diagram is going to break down into a series of triangles. In this particular phase diagram, we have two triangles. So if we happen to be in the green triangle, the vertices of that triangle are B, C, and AC2. 
So any point in that part of the phase diagram is going to be an equilibrium mixture of those three phases. Then we have this blue triangle up here. And the vertices of that triangle are A, B, and AC2. So any point in the blue region of the phase diagram here is going to give us a mixture of those three phases. Okay, let's look at a real phase diagram, albeit a fairly simple one. It's the phase diagram between titanium dioxide, zirconium dioxide, and aluminum oxide. You can see here that we form two binary phases, zirconium TiO4 and aluminum 2 TiO5. And there are no quaternary phases that contain all three components. On the phase diagram, there are points marked from A through F. I'd like you to just jot down what phase or phases are present at each of those points. Once you've got your answers, let the video roll again and we'll go over them together. Point A happens to be on the zirconium dioxide aluminum oxide line, right? It's just in, on that binary phase diagram and uh, there are no intermediate phases, so that's just a mixture of those two phases. It happens to be closer to the zirconium dioxide end, so it's 60% zirconium dioxide and 40% aluminum oxide. Point B is midway between TiO2 and ZrO2, and at that point we get this binary phase, zirconium titanium O4. Point C is in this triangle right here, and that's going to be a mixture of zirconium dioxide, zirconium TiO4, and aluminum 2 TiO5, which make up the vertices of that triangle. Point D is in this triangle that sort of represents the right-hand side of this phase diagram. So the vertices of that triangle, zirconium dioxide, aluminum oxide, and Al2 TiO5. And then points E and F are both within the same triangle, Right, and this triangle is uh, defined by TiO2, aluminum 2, TiO5, and zirconium TiO4. And so those phases are present at equilibrium both at points E and points F. Now, the ratio of the phases is different at those two points, but the phases present are the same. We could work out the ratio of these three phases present at E by using the same rules that we went over before. Probably the easiest way to do that would be to use what's called the triangle rule. Okay, so where you draw a line from each vertex through point E to the opposite side. And then the triangle rule, which is comparable to the lever rule, the fraction uh, is gonna be the opposite side divided by the length of the entire line. And so we could do that for all three vertices. I am not going to ask you to determine the phase fractions of phases in these ternary phase diagrams, but it is something that can be done. Now, here's another question for you. What would happen if you took a sample that was 50 mole percent zirconium dioxide, 30 mole percent TiO2, 20 mole percent aluminum oxide, you mix those together, you ground them up, you heated them to whatever temperature this phase diagram represents. Let's say it's 1,000 degrees C, and then you measured the phases that are present. Where would that point be on this phase diagram, and what phases would be present? Okay, do you have an answer? Well, let's go over it. 50% ZRO2. That's going to be somewhere on this horizontal line. This line would represent 30% TiO2. Right? So if we go 1, 2, 3, that's 30% of the way here to TiO2. And at the top, 1, 2, 3, 30% of the way to TiO2. 
So we've got that line. Now, really, we can see that they're going to intersect right here. But just to make sure we haven't made a mistake, let's look at where the line that represents 20% aluminum oxide goes through. And that line, uh, as it should, actually intersects the other two all at one common point. So at that point, that's the composition we're talking about on this phase diagram. Now, what phases are present? Well, you should be able to see that we're in this triangle. And the vertices of that triangle are zirconium TiO4, zirconium dioxide, and aluminum 2 TiO5. So it would be a mixture of those three phases. All right, let's now look at, say, a little bit more complicated phase diagram. This is the phase diagram between yttrium oxide, barium oxide, and copper 2 oxide. It's a quite an important phase diagram historically because many of the high temperature superconductors came out of uh, phase diagrams like this one. So in this phase diagram, we are forming two binary compounds between barium oxide and yttrium oxide, two binary compounds between barium oxide and copper oxide, and one binary compound between yttrium oxide and copper oxide. We also have one, two, three, four different quaternary phases that contain all three components. And, and they're given abbreviations, which I, I've written over here. Now, when we look at this phase diagram, it should be a collection of triangles. So if you have a region on your phase diagram that doesn't look like a triangle, then you've probably drawn the phase diagram wrong. But here we can see everywhere uh, triangles. But it is a rather complicated phase diagram. Let me ask you a question. If I were to make up a sample that had stoichiometry yttrium-2, barium-2, copper-4, O9, what would it be? Would it be a single phase sample? Would it be a mixture of two phases? Or would we have a mixture of three phases? And what phase or phases would be present? Use everything that we've discussed in the lecture up to this point and see if you can answer this question. Okay, the key thing here is to locate the point on the phase diagram that this composition refers to. So if we just think about the metals for a minute, two yttrium, two barium, four copper. Two plus two plus four adds up to eight. So it means the sample is 50% copper oxide, 25% yttrium oxide, 25% barium oxide. So the 50% copper oxide line is going to be this horizontal line shown in red. The 25% yttrium oxide is going to be along this line, which runs parallel to the barium oxide, copper oxide face and the 25% barium oxide line is going to run along this red line. And so those all three intersect at the point that I've drawn there with the white circle. And I should be able to see that that point is in this triangle that I've shaded here with green. And the vertices of that triangle are going to be Copper oxide, that's the top vertex. Yttrium, barium-2, copper-307, right? that's the point marked 1, 2, 3. And yttrium-2, barium, copper-05, which is the point marked 2, 1, 1. If you were trying to make that compound that I've written at the bottom, yttrium-2, barium-2, copper-409, and you grind it, you heat it up in the furnace, maybe quench it from a certain elevated temperature, and then you take, let's say, an x-ray diffraction pattern and see what you have, and you find out that you've got a mixture of these three phases. But what that tells you is the phase you're trying to make does not exist on the phase diagram. 